we cut it. it. Record, record it. Broadcast, broadcast case, case report, report from, from Zhongnan Hospital, Hospital Wuhan, Wuhan University, University China. China. This, this is 67-year-old male patient. Find a normal of the abdominal bladder for more than one year. White line endoscopy show Two by four centimeter large new gene in the duodenal pubic nerve. NBI endoscopy and NBI magnification endoscopy show no no appeal. Significant casserole feature. Endoscopic ultrasound graphic show no obvious infection of the pineal pancreatic duct. We do the Sub mucosa injection under the duodenal scope. We only injection in the cordial side, not very high. We want to try to encycle it at one time. So we snail it from the cephalic side. Slowly close the snail, but only partial digging can trap in the snail. We close it. Slowly and wait. You want to stop the blood supply partially. So you can see the change of color. Release it. We trap the nutrient from the cultural side again. Cross the snail slowly. You can see the cephalic side of the lesion 
was trapped in the snail. We closed it. We released it again. This time, we want and cycle the total region into the snail. Change the position. You can see we circle set the region, total region into the snail and the cause the snail slightly and the weight a little time to stop the blood supply of the region. We wait to stop partially the blood supply to decrease the post-operative bleeding. We cut it You can see the total region was removed at one time but a little pretty you can see in the right side of the wood. So we stop it with electrical coagulation forcep. You must do it very careful, careful, carefully because the wall is very thin now. Solved coagulation. We close the wood partially with the clip from the cordial side.
we do ESP again, we can find we find a feeling defect in the end of bio duct. We move we move the de defect with the balloon. So we can see the lesion outside the opening of the bio duct. We snail it again. And uh, cut it again. But, however, the perforation of the operation intestinal wall was obviously due to the injury of the polyp snails. So we close the perforation with the clip again and cannulation the bio duct can you mention the pancreatic duct and put a bio duct stand and the pancreatic stand and close the region very tightly with the clip again so this is the end of the operation. At the end of the operation, one drainage tube was placed in the duodenal and one in the stomach. We use the imipenem and tachoplanum after the operation. Post-operative CT scan. Two days later, we do the post-operating CT scan. You can see only a very little glass outside the duodenal wall. No infection. The WC is only very slightly raised. One week after operation, the patient recovered and was discharged from hospital. Post-operative pathology Venous tubular adenoma and the section 7A is seen with residual adenoma at one end. Subsequent follow up pain. We prepare to do repeat ESP one month again. later. Remove the bile duct stand and the pancreatic stand. Biopsy the bile duct opening first, then ablation the residual adenoma at the bile duct opening by ABC. Repeat ERCP three months later again. If there are still residual nutrients, biopsy of the bile duct opening Opening again, APC ab ablation is performed again after biopsy. If there is no residual nutrients, remove the stent.
After that, duodenoscope was performed every three to six months to observe the condition of the pupina. In about two years, if benignant cells are found on biopsy, surgical treatment is recommended. This is our endoscopic center. It's very beautiful. Thank you. And uh, infection uh, in the abdomen or ritual referee uh, cavities. So uh, uh, if the preparation happened, we must close the yeast. Immediately, we cannot wait. Uh, I think uh, the pathology of the, uh, of the, of the region is adenoma. Is a uh, is is a benign uh, uh, so we can wait. Uh, the uh, the we can wait the uh, uh, here of the preparation. Uh, what sometimes um, uh, and uh, I think uh, about uh, one month later we do ESP and uh, maybe have no resident at Noma maybe have may maybe half. So uh, the next uh, second time, we cannot do anything others. We cannot smell it because the well is very thin. We can only ABC it, uh, ABC ablation it. Thank you very much for this nice presentation. Uh, do you take biopsies before the procedure or do you depend only on magnification endoscopy and uh, MBI and EOS? And we what do, settings do you use for cutting? We have done uh, a biopsy before the operation. Uh, yeah. uh, the pathology we feel it, it is um, a benign lesion. It, it, it is uh, not. Uh, I think it's important not to do biopsy. <laughs> Now, let's see. Uh, Professor Ray? We can hear you. You can hear you clearly. So, so you did biopsy before the procedure? No, we should not do a biopsy. Because, you know, if you, if you do biopsy, uh, you, you are induced fibrosis, and the fibrosis reduce the benefits of ESD or MR. So now we have a general consensus. When you saw that kind of lesion, you assess by NBI and magnification, and then you treat. No biopsy. You send only the specimen, as thou did, to the, to the pathologist. No more biopsy, just assessment with NBI. And also it's very important that when you have a small close uh, perforation, you close it. And it's also important to insert stent in bile duct, in pancreatic duct. And as you've seen, uh, they have a typical way of life in China. They always insert nasobiliary tube that we never do anymore in Europe, but it's typical in China.
Now, if the specimen that comes back uh, shows some malignant cells, would you refer the patient immediately to uh, surgery or would you follow up the patient? Oh, no, I think, you know, if you are malignant, you, you wait a little bit that everything has been uh, cured and, uh, and healed, and then you send to a surgeon. But you, you could send to a surgeon within a month. I think, you know, when you do that kind of procedure with both uh, um, biliary and pancreatic scenting, it's better for a surgeon to do the surgery one month later in order to heal all the uh, pancreatic edema. But definitely, it's a young patient. If it's a fit for surgery, of course, if you have malignancy, you should send for surgery later on. Even, even if the malignancy is only superficial malignancy in carcinoma uh, in situ. Yeah, you know, that, you have to, to rely on the, on the pathologist. If a pathologist tells you it's a malignancy in situ, the patient is cured. But if a, the pathologist tells you we have a deep invasion, of course, you have to send to surgery. It's exactly like, like we remove a polyp. If we have a remove okay. a polyp by ESD, MR, polypectomy, if we have uh, inside to superficial uh, malignancy, the patient is cured. If you have uh, a deep uh, uh, invasion, so you send to surgery. Uh, what settings do you use for cutting in this uh, procedure? <laughs> We use, uh, I only use the uh, uh, the um, undercut. Undercut, yeah. Only undercut. Uh, we have to move to the next. energy is about uh, 50 to 70. Yeah. Dr. Zhu, we have to move to uh, uh, Dr. Jun Fang because uh, the opening is coming very soon. So, Ahmed, please, uh, the next video. It's very interesting. Dear Chairman of the Conference, Conference and, and the Professor, it's a, it's a pleasure, pleasure to perform here. here. My, My name, name is Fang Jun from, from Zhongnan Zhong Hospital, Hospital in Wuhan. Wuhan. General, General information patient, patient six, six nine, nine years, years old, male, male. Chief, chief complaint, complaint of abdominal, abdominal pain, pain for two, two months. months. Text, Text report, report CA199 significant increase. Uh, IgG4 lomer diagnosis uh, pancreatic uh, carcinoma. Abdominal CT shows a four multiplied three cm mass with low density on the pancreatic head. Feather management USFNA performer Dr. Fang Jun. I use a liner EUS scope. No, I talk about the standard scanning methods of EUS FNA today. The scanning is divided into three parts stomach, duodenal bulb. Descending of duodenal, the patient was sedated with purple foam. Firstly, scanning from stomach with the patient lying in the left lateral position. The left lobe of the liver is imaged after the scalp has passed the cardia. The left hepatic vein is also observed from this position. Rotate the scalp clockwise to visualize the abdominal aorta. When the scalp is advanced from this position along the abdominal aorta, the celiac axis and the superior mesenteric artery uh, are imaged. The celiac axis is usually easier to image. If we slightly insert the scalp and uh, rotate counterclockwise, Pancreatic body is uh, observed. We can see the spanic artery and the spanic Y. In general, the spanic artery is imaged nearer and the spanic Y farther from the scalp. 
the splenic artery and vein can be discriminated by means of color and plus Doppler. When the splenic vein is traced, the confluence between the superior mesenteric vein and the portal vein can be observed. Withdraw the scope to trans the splenic vein while rotating it clockwise lit by lit to observe the pancreas from the body toward the toy. The main pancreatic duct can also be observed. We can observe uh, left kidney and left uh, adrenal uh, gland. Rotate the scalp clockwise, continue to observe the pancreas until the spinal hyalon. If we slightly insert the scalp and uh, rotate counterclockwise again, we can see from the pancre pancreas tail toward the confluence. In this position, part of the pancreatic head is also imaged. When the scope is uh, rotated counterclockwise at the portal confluence, the junction between the pancreatic head and the body, the main pancreatic duct, and the bile duct can also be observed. We can measure the diameter of the main pancreatic duct is 4 mm. Mind expansion was observed after imagining the main trunk of the portal wine. Withdraw the scope to trace the portal wine toward the liver. This makes uh, it uh, possible to observe the hilum of the liver, common hepatic duct, common by doctor and uh, glabular. We slightly insert the scope to trans the portal wine toward the portal confluence again. Scanning from the stomach is over. Secondly, scanning from duodenal bulb. Insert the scope into the duodenal bulb. Rotate the scope clockwise to realize three luminal structures. The portal wine, bile duct, and the common hepatic artery can be identified using Doppler as required. We can realize the confluence between the portal Y, splenic Y, and the superior mesenteric Y. We can observe a low echo region in the pancreatic head. We can measure the diameter of the low echo region is 14 mm. It's heterogeneous egg clear boundary and the invasion of blue visuals. Next, we will talk about elastography combined with the strain rate of tissue elasticity. Strain rate of this region is 24.43. Carcinoma may be. We can measure the diameter of the common bulb duct is 4 mm. No significant expansion was observed. Scanning from the duodenal bulb is over. Thirdly, scanning from the descending part of duodenum, 
insert the scalp into the descending part of the duodenum and strengthen it before straightening. Starting observation. Rotate the scalp in clockwise to realize the aorta and the IVC. Why imagine the aorta withdraw the scalp slowly to realize the ampullar region? Why observing the ampullar region, we draw the scalp slowly to imagine a low egg region near the transducers. Rotate the scalp slightly clockwise and counterclockwise to identify two laminar structures in the low egg region. The common by doctor is imagined near the transducer and the main pancreatic duct is imaged on the farther point. We can measure the diameter of main pancreatic duct is 3.8 mm. Mind expansion was observed. We can measure the diameter of the common bile is 1.6 mm. Invasion of blue wishes is observed. Sometimes the common bile is traced to the hilum of the liver. Scanning from the descending part of the duodenum is over. Next, we will talk about EUS FNA. We can observe a low egg rejection near the pancreatic head. We will use Cook 22 gauge per core needle before EUS FNA. It's also required to check that the patient does not have any bleeding tendons or is on anti Arguments. Check the ultrasound image to confirm the, that the sheath of the aspiration needle is projecting from the instrument canal. If significant uh, resistance is encountered when inserting the aspiration needle through the canal, adjust scope 
angulation until the aspiration needle can be easily inserted with jaw. Check the insert insertion angle based on the echo image of the sheath or needle tube. Don't raise the forcep uh, elevator too much, as this could be bend the aspiration needle and move it away from the ultrasound scanning plan. Before puncturing, visualize the lesion in the B mode image of the uh, ultronic endoscope and uh, confirm the absence of intervening blood vessels by means of claw doppler. It's helpful at this time to withdraw the stylet by about 5 minutes. This uh, procedure also makes the needle sharper and the insertion easier. After inserting the needle into the lesion, be sure to completely reinsert the stylet to clean the needle tip before aspirating. This will prevent unnecessary contamination from gastro intestinal tract cells. The needle was passed through the gastrointestinal Internal wall into the target lesion under EUS guidance with visualization of the needle in real time. After the needle was guided into the target lesion, the stylet was withdrawn and the needle was moved back and forth within the lesion 20 uh, 13 times while negative. Uh, pre pressures or 5 mm pressures or 10 um, pressures. Sanction was released and the needle was withdrawn. Submit the specimens for cytology and uh, cell block preparation for history. Post procedure, monitor the patient for any advanced events. Normal pancreatic cell is observed for histology. But serial dysplasia is observed for cytology. So its pancreatic 
Kasi Lomo. Welcome to Wuhan. This is the image of the lesion that is located in the rectum, 6 cm to the anus. This shows the different parts of the lesion by magnifying endoscopy. We can see most parts of the lesion have visible and regular tubular branched or papillary surface pattern. Only in the top of the lesion, the surface pattern becomes irregular and obscure. According to the genet classification system, the lesion is belong to genet type 2A or type 2B low, indicating no grade intramucosal neoplasia in the most parts of the lesion and high grade intramucosal neoplasia in the top of the lesion. For ESD operation, the first step is to cut and open the end in the anal side and dissect the anal parts of the lesion. The second step is to cut and open the oral side to establish an obvious end in the oral side under reverse view. Now let's move on to the operation demonstration. Usually, the first step is to mark the edge of the lesion, but for those lesions with an obvious margin, including this one, the step of marking is not a mandatory requirement. You can just do the operation without marking. Now we are going to mark in the lesion on the reverse view. Now the step of marking is done. We are going to move on to the step of submucosal injection. According to my experience, injection as much fluid as possible into the submucosal layer without affecting the visual field is a good way to lower the risk of perforation. Now we are going to do the mucosal incision.
Bleeding caused by small blood vessel rupture can be stopped by forced coagulation. Just directly use the knife. Coagulation forceps are not necessary in these circumstances, so that we can save the time of accessory change. Now we are moving on to the submucosal dissection. Sometimes we need to pretreat visible vessels by coagulation. Compared with the treatment after bleeding, pretreatment can save a lot of hemostasis time. In order to avoid perforation, additional submucosal injection is necessary from time to time. Occasionally, coagulation forceps will be bleeded when bleeding is caused by big vessel ruptures.
To avoid the injury of muscularis propria, we need to raise the knife slightly when cutting, especially when the water cushion is not too thick. Now we have finished the first step. We have dissected the anal parts of the lesion. We will move on to the second step, that is to open the mucosa of the oral side and establish an obvious cutting end on the oral side. We need to trim the edge of the oral side sufficiently to make sure that there is a clear cutting end. The oral cutting end have been made. We pull out the endoscope and clear the camera.
Now we can see the muscularis propria in some areas. If we are continuing cutting forward, the perforation risk is high, so we can change the cutting method by pulling back the knife when cutting to avoid muscular injury. The operation is almost done. We need to reconfirm the age of the oral site to make sure that the entire lesion is being dissected.
the entire lesion have been separated. The last step is to coagulate all the visible vessels to prevent post-operation bleeding. Finally, we need to examine the wound and make sure all the visible vessels have been treated and there is no muscularis propria injury. After the operation, we need to make the report and fix the specimen. This is the histological report. It shows that the lesion is a tubular venous adenoma with focal high-grade intraepithelial neoplasia. The horizontal margin and the vertical margin are both negative. This is not a perfect performance. Both proficiency and stability need to be improved. I'm looking forward to receiving your criticism upon this operation. Thanks for your watching.
I cannot present uh, the uh, skill in our uh, in our uh, opera. <laughs> but but I just want to show the uh, operation to show even uh, how uh, an expert grow how how uh, how the beginner can grow to an expert. Show the process. Thank you. But I can ask you about the post-operative care. What do you usually do for such a patient? Uh, sorry? The post-operative care, uh, medications, uh, feeding. Uh, after the operation, you mean after the operation, what drug will I, I use? What, what do you tell your patients to do and not to do after the procedure? Uh, usually we will ask the doctor no no food and water for uh, maybe for uh, 48 hours and uh, sometimes we don't use the biotic but some uh, if i if i think the uh, clo the clone condition is not so good maybe i will treat the patient with antibody so, uh, Gunay, you know in uh, in my unit you know we treat this kind of patient like uh, mucosectomy or like polypectomy. So no drugs, we have a foot on the evening and we are discharged within 12 hours. We just monitor the patient to look about the stool if they are not bleeding in one, eight weeks, one week. But you know, when, this procedure performed this morning is perfect. Even for a beginner, you did quite well. Congratulations. Definitely, congratulations. Thank you very much. Well, now we move to uh, our dear friend, uh, the Professor uh, Hongjin Wang. Thank you, Hello, Hello everyone. everyone. Dear Ray, Ray and, and Rag, Rag. We wish, wish to, to see you again. again. I'm, I'm Hongjin Wang, Wang the, the Associate, Associate Director, Director of, of Department, Department of Gastroenterology, Zhongnan Hospital of Wuhan University. I have been focusing on the diagnosis and the treatment of biliary and pancreatic disease. Today, I'm very happy to present the combined application of ERCP, IDUS, and spyglass in a case of introductory papillary mucinous neoplasm named IPMN. IPMN is a kind of pancreatic cystic leoplasm with malignant potential. It originated from pancreatic duct epithelium and grown as papillary architecture. Excessive mucus secretion may cause the progressive dilation or cyst of main pancreatic duct or branch duct. IPMN is a common precursor of pancreatic duct adenocarcinoma. It can change adenoma into carcinoma. First it's normal pancreatic duct and then it is no grade dysplasia in IPMN. Following high grade displacer in IPMN, last is invasive IPMN. IPMN accounts for 5% to 7.5% of pancreatic tumors and 21 to 33% of pancreatic cystic tumors. Prevalent in the group of 60 to 70 years old. Beline cases are five years younger than the malignant cases. 24% cases IPMN with colon polypores. Clinical characteristics between pancreatic mucinous cystadenoma and IPMN IPMN usually located at the pancreatic head and the body. MCT usually at pancreatic body and the tail. Both have high adenocarcinoma. MCT 
usually have fibrous capsule, and IPMA usually have communication between cyst and duct. Comparison of clinical characteristics between bilateral and malignant IPMN. The major difference it is subtype and mural larger. The branch duct type is usually the bilateral tumor, but the ma main duct type and the combined type uh, it is easy. Uh, changed into carcinoma. The mirror nodule in adenocarcinoma is usually bigger than it uh, in benign tumor. Prognosis of benign and malignant IPMN post-operative survive curves for. 879 cases of IPMT. In IPMT, the post-operative three-year survival rate was 62.2% for patients with invasive carcinoma. The five-year survival rate was still 57.7%. In MCT, for 153 cases, the post-operative one-year survival rate was 75% uh, uh, for patients with invasive carcinoma, but the two-year rate was 37.5%. Uh, Clinical characteristics of different pancreatic cystic tumors include MCN, BD, IPMN, SCN, and pseudocyst. Uh, it has different location and calcification and multivocality and the main uh, different uh, main pancreatic duct and communication and uh, different cyst fluid analysis. IPMN is divided into three kinds according its involvement. First is main duct IPMN. MD is partially or generally dilation. Its diameter is more than 5 mm. The second is branch duct IPMN. It cyst more than 5 mm and communicate with MD. No dilation of MD. The third is mixed type IPMN. It includes the characteristics of both MD IPMN and BD IPMN. From images, we can observe the different characteristics of three kind IPMN. In MD IPMN, we can observe dilated main duct. In BD and P IPMN, we can uh, the branch pancreatic duct uh, into cyst. In mixed IPMN, we can observe the dilated main duct and uh, branch duct into cyst. Carcinogenesis incidence of IPMN is about uh, 40%. In MD IPMN, it is more than 62%. In BD IPMN, it is about uh, 24%. In MT IPMN, it is more than 57%. How about IPMN treatment? 
are any of the following high-risk stigmata of malignancy present? Obstructive jaundice in cystic region of the head of pancreas, enhancing neurology more than 5 mm, may pancreatic duct more than 10 mm. It is yes, consider surgery. It is no, are uh, any of the foreign viruses features present, clinical pancreatitis, imaging cyst more than 3 cm, enhancing mural logo less than 5 mm, synced or enhanced cyst walls, may doctor size 5 to 9 mm, abrupt change in caliber of pancreatic duct with distal pancreatic atrophy, lymphadenopathy, increased serum level of CA199, cyst growth rates more than 5 mm every two years. If yes, perform endoscopic ultrasound. Are uh, any of the least feature present? Definitely mural large more than 5 mm. Main duct features suspicious for involvement. Cytology suspicious or positive for malignancy. It is also lead surgery. It is known uh, what is the size of largest cyst. We should close surveillance. Let's talk the cases. The patient, uh, it is 52 years old, with abdominal pain, uh, his Previous medical history include pancreatitis, hypertension, and coronary heart disease. Physical examination uh, is upper abdominal pain, refused to press movie sign, it is suspicious positive. CT is acute pancreatitis. Examination after hospitalization uh, indicate the white blood cell is much higher than normal and uh, the eminence and the nipis it is the more than 1000. CT scan showed low density in pan pancreas head and indicated pseudocysts. The dunoscope advances beyond the bumper into the descending duodenum. Papilla is brought to the full view on the video screen. Oh, show bigger mouse. It is typically recognizable as a protuberance with a central opening, which are characterized as a fish mouth. Look, bile duct and pancreatic duct open separately. Lots of mucus flow out, especially when suction. However, it is not as a front a spine or pancreatic juice. Usually, cannulation of pancreatic duct with a straight cannula is attempted. It is pretty challenging to achieve optimal position to approach the propina from distance and aim for one o'clock position of papilla. In the present case, as for the pancreatic duct dilation, it is easy to cannulate. Pancreatography 
shows regular pancreatic duct, but dilated branch ducts within pancreatic head. We can see a cyst of more than one centimeter in the pancreatic hook. The cyst communicates with the MPD through branch pancreatic duct. We forward IDS probe into the MPD and withdraw slowly. May duct size 5 mm. No obvious dilation, but when the probe arrive to pancreatic head, we see the cyst. Cyst by cyst, just like grape, when the wire enters the cyst, following the IDS probe, ultrasound shows a hypoic cyst, size 15.6 mm, multiple 16.1 mm second septor in the cyst. Usually, IPMN could be classified into three types, namely MD-IPMN, BD-IPMN, and mixed type. Obviously, this case belongs to the type of BD-IPMN. This patient is too young, and considering the diameter of a cyst, it is at a high risk of malignancies. Thus, we perform further tests to evaluate the lesions. Finally, spyglass and the pancreatic duct. The pancreatic duct looks smoothly. We can see the opening of branch duct clearly. In the pancreatic head and the pancreatic hook, we can see much mucus flowing from the branch duct. It is difficult to watch out by saining. Considering the carcinogenesis risk, the case is advised for surgery. Pathological diagnosis is introductory papillary mucinous neoplasm of the pancreas with no grade dysplasia, focus with high grade dysplasia. Specimen after pancreatic duodenectomy. This is a cyst neoplasm. We can see the cyst and the mural larger. Sometimes we can see the mucus full of the space. How about current status of endoscopic diagnosis and treatment in IPMN? We make the diagnosis of IPMN with the help of EUS and ERCP. By EUS, we can observe the mural larger, second hepceptor, distinguish mural larger from mucin. Cytology is the golden standard examination for diagnosis of malignancy in IPMN, cytological examination can be done using pancreatic juice obtained during ERCP or sister fluid sample by EUS guided fine needle aspiration. Cytology of the pancreatic juice is associated with relatively low sensitivity of 10 to 50 percent for diagnosing malignancy. The sensitivity can be increased to 80 percent with the use of repeated sampling through a near pancreatic catheter. Irrigation of the pancreatic duct also reported increased diagnostic 
sensitivity of ERCP cytology to 78%. Endoscopy plays a pivotal role in decision-making in the management of IPMN, whether to observe or operate on a IPMN depends on the presence and size of mural nodule IPMN. Mural nodule can be distinguished from the mucous aggregates within the IPMN with the use of Doppler EUS and more definitively by contrast the enhanced harmonical EUS to demonstrate the presence of blood supply. Thank you for your attention.